In this video, I'm gonna help you choose a domain name for your online business. So let's check it out. Hey, I'm Matt Donnelly from OnlineBusinessTech.com. And one of the most important things that you need to figure out before you start building your website is what your domain name is gonna be. So that's your .com. That's the thing that people are actually gonna type into their browser in order to get to your website. So I'm gonna share my technical recommendations on how you should construct your domain name. But first, I wanna talk about branding. So if you just change the question slightly and ask what should my brand name be, as opposed to what should my domain name be, you open up a much wider range of resources to help you make a more intelligent and educated decision from more of a marketing perspective um, as opposed to a technical perspective. So let's talk about the five different types of brand names that you could choose as it relates to domain names. So the first one is personal branding. So that would be taking your first name and your last name and putting it together to create your domain. So a lot of people do this, uh, for example, johnloomer.com, he's a Facebook marketing expert, amyporterfield.com, she's also a Facebook and social media expert, lewishouse.com. Um, there's a number of people who really, uh, who, who take that personal branding approach to their online business. And personally, I feel like that approach works best for life coaches, mentors, um, basically anyone who is a personal or business expert, you know, and their, their business really revolves around their personal expertise um, or experiences. So by branding your domain as a personal brand, it kind of gives, gives you more of a celebrity status in a sense. So it's a little bit easier to, it kind of gives you extra credibility and trust and authority um, by, by putting you in the spotlight. So if you feel like your business is really revolved around your personal expertise, then that's something you might want to look at. Some technical things to keep in mind though, if your name is impossible to spell, then you really want to consider you know, going with something else because you don't want people to miss out on your site just because they can't spell it. You also want to think about whether you want to use your full name or a nickname. So for me, you know, my name's Matthew, but I always go by Matt. So if I were to do a personal brand, I would definitely go with mattdonley.com. So just think about how you address yourself, you know, or introduce yourself when you're talking in a video or something like that. And you probably want to stick with that with your personal brand. So a couple of things, even if you don't plan on using your personal domain name for your business, it still might be a good idea to, to buy it just so you have it and you can, you know, you can do different things with it. You can use it as, as like a resume or a link to all your social media accounts. It's just something to think about if you, you know, as you grow your brand and you grow your business online, um, you, you want to keep your options open and it, it is a good idea if you do have your, your name available to purchase, it, it's a good idea to get that. Um, but that's totally up to you, obviously. And the other thing I wanna mention is just, you know, even if you're not going to be using the personal brand name for your domain, that still doesn't, that doesn't mean that you don't wanna inject your personality into your business. I think it's really important to really put your face out in front of the business and show the world that, hey, I'm a real person, you know, and it just, it gives it that much more credibility. So, okay, so that's the first, uh, domain brand name option. The second one is going with a generic or descriptive brand name for your business. So for example, if you had a website about photography, a generic brand name would be photography.com. Okay, so it's basically using a keyword that's exactly descriptive of the subject that you're, that you're about. Um, a descriptive uh, brand name would be like onlinebusinesstech.com. So you're using keywords, two or three keywords, to give a very obvious hint as to what your website is about. And I think this is a great approach because it gives people an idea what your website is about without having to know any context. So they don't have to go to the site to figure it out. They don't have to, you know, see the link 
within uh, a sentence that describes, hey, go to this site, it's about photography, anything like that. So it gives you a slight advantage when people are saying your brand name, um, other people are can immediately recognize what the website is about. Now, in the past, you also had a, a SEO benefit, a search engine optimization benefit by having exact match domain uh, keywords in your domain. And that has really gone away. Google has really changed their algorithm in how they rank exact match domains. So I really wouldn't approach it from a perspective of search engine optimization. But really it's more for the perspective of the you know actual real people who see the domain name and identify with what the subject is about. So some examples of generic or descriptive domain names would be smartpassiveincome.com. So Pat's site, it's about how to generate passive income. And the thing that's kind of cool is he put the word smart in front of it, so it kind of gives the impre the, you know, it implies that there's also a dumb way to do it. So by having that in his domain name, it makes you think like, oh, man, there's a smart way to do it. Maybe I should check that out. So that's kind of cool that he has that in there. Another site is digitalphotographyschool.com by Darren Rouse. That's a very descriptive, obvious uh, domain name as to what the site is about. It's You're gonna learn how to do digital photography. Another one is nerdfitness.com. That's an awesome fitness site by Steve Cam. And you know, instantly, when you hear nerdfitness.com, you know it's a site about fitness, but geared specifically towards nerds. So it's a really cool site, you should check it out. Okay, so the third type of brand name that you can choose for your domain is a suggestive brand name. A suggestive brand name uses metaphors and analogies to convey a meaning about a business. So for example, blackcoffee.com. You have no idea what that's about, right? Without me giving you some context. So blackcoffee.com is a brand consultant company. And so that's kind of cool because when I think of black coffee, I think of, you know, those hardcore office people who just drink black coffee because they're up working all the time. You know, it's it, it conveys the a hard worker, you know, someone who's who's just constantly at, at the, the grindstone, you know, going, working hard and, and getting stuff done. Another example of a suggestive brand name is Mixergy. Mixergy is a podcast created by Andrew Warner. And so he took the word mixer, which is a, a, a gathering, a social gathering, and energy. So he combined those two words to create Mixergy. Groupon is another example. So you take group and coupon, you combine the two words, and it, you know, it suggests what the site is about. So a suggestive brand name could be a real word or a made up word, either or. Now the fourth type of brand name is an arbitrary or fanciful brand name. So these are either words uh, that have no meaning whatsoever to the brand itself other than what, you know, has been assigned to it. So a, a famous example would be Apple, the technology company named after a fruit. So there's really, there's nothing suggestive uh, about the fruit apple that would make you think of technology other than the fact that that's the name of the company. Another example would be Shell, the oil company, which is named after a clamshell. So again, there's nothing, there's nothing about those words that relate to the, uh, the brand itself. Now a fanciful brand name is something that's completely made up and has no meaning whatsoever. So Trello is a good example of a completely made up brand name. Another example would be Gumroad, which is a website that allows you to sell digital products online. So there's no, there's no hint whatsoever as to what Gumroad would mean unless you had context, um, you know, within the link or someone told you what it was about. Now the fifth brand name is actually just to do a hybrid. So you don't have to stick with just one type of brand name. You could combine uh, multiple types into one. So one hybrid approach that's really common is to take your first name and then add it to a descriptive brand name. So one example would be nomadicmat.com, who's a travel blogger. So he took nomadic, put his first name after it and created this hybrid brand name for his domain. Another example is goinswriter.com. Jeff Goins, so he took his last name and combined it with writer in order to create goinswriter.com. 
Now let's talk about some of the technical points to remember when trying to figure out what you want for your domain name. So the, the most important thing is it should be easy to remember. Now there's a number of things that you can do to make it easy to remember, but in general you don't want a very generic domain name because there's less distinction um, attached to your brand. So try to stay away from really generic brand names. Um, try to do something a little more creative or more distinct. That way, you know, pe it'll stick in people's minds. You also want it to be easy to spell. You don't want people to be mistyping your domain name and missing out on your website because they just didn't spell it right. Now, some things to keep in mind are try to avoid using numbers because if you say photography1.com, you don't know if it's the number one or the, the word one spelt out or the word one, W-O-N. So, so things like that, you wanna to try to stay away from. Stay away from hyphenations and, and different punctuation like that. People expect, like if I say onlinebusinesstech.com, they don't expect to have to put hyphens in between each word. You also want the domain name to be easy to say. You don't wanna to have to, uh, after saying your domain name, have to explain, you know, say it over a few times so people get it. You don't, if someone has to ask you again what the domain was, then that's probably a good sign that it's not a good choice for, for a domain name. You also want to think about how the domain name will look in a logo. So when you design your website, you're going to want to design a logo and you want to play around with how the words look uh, when they're arranged in different ways and if you're going to have some kind of graphic for the logo, how does the domain name look um, in the logo? Now as far as domain extensions, that's the ending of your domain, so the .com, .net, .org. You want to stick with .com um, if at all possible because that's still the most uh, dominant domain extension that's out there and that's the one people are going to expect your domain is going to be is a .com. There have recently been a number of additional um, domain extensions that have become available, but in general they're more expensive to purchase and still the, the main reason is just that people expect it to be a .com, so that's really what you want to try to go for. You also want to make sure the domain is distinct and unique. You don't want to have any confusion as to uh, you know if your if your brand sounds similar to another brand you don't want to have any confusion as to who is who and you know you could get into some legal trouble with that but also just in general you don't want to lose um, your audience because they got you confused with someone else now as far as your domain name length you want to keep it as short as possible now it's going to be really hard to try to find short domain names that are still available but you, you know, if you aim for something between 10 to 20 letters, um, that's, that's a pretty good length for a domain name. And the reason for that is it's easier to remember and it's easier to type in when they're going to your website. Now, you may have seen um, a lot of domains that use filler words. So, you know, if you were thinking of creating a scrapbooking site, scrapbookingtips.com, if that one's already taken, you might think to do the best scrapbookingtips.com. I would recommend avoiding those types of filler words because they kind of dilute your brand. They don't, it's just obvious that they're filler words. They're not, they're not really adding to your brand name. They're just being added onto the domain because you couldn't get the real one that you wanted. So if at all possible, try to avoid those types of filler words because they're, they're just gonna dilute your brand. Now one tip, if you're having trouble finding domains that match the words that you want, try using a thesaurus. Go to thesaurus.com and type in those keywords that you want to use in your domain and you'll, you'll come up with synonyms that you could substitute and play around with different combinations to, to find one that works for you. So once you've come up with a few ideas for domain names, if you go to onlinebusinesstech.com forward slash domains, you can use the domain tool on my site to see if they're available, and then you can purchase the domain right through Bluehost. So thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe to get more tutorials on online business tech.